In celebration of Black History Month, I'd like for us to highlight an artist named Henry Osawa Tanner. Tanner is considered by many to be perhaps the greatest Black American painter to ever live, and at the very least, one of the most important. Given his prominence and stature, it is important for us to understand his legacy and body of work, not only because he was a devoutly Christian man who frequently painted scenes from the Bible, but also because we use several of his paintings within our church services at Saginaw UMC. Tanner was a deeply spiritual man, and his paintings are packed with theological messaging. Some have even characterized his paintings as being visual sermons. But before we can understand the theological messages of his paintings, we have to understand the historical context in which he was working, and we have to take into account his identity as an African-American man. Tanner was born in 1859 and died in 1937. This means that, for much of his professional life, he painted during an era called the Nadir period in African-American history. The Nadir period took place from 1877 to 1920, after the failure of Reconstruction in a post-Civil War America. After slavery, this is considered one of the lowest and most disparaging times of Black American history. It was during this era that many states used political power to enact racist laws such as Jim Crow laws and segregation. Legal slavery under the guise of prison labor was prominent. America saw the rise of the Ku Klux Klan, and lynching became a widespread practice. It was a time of violent racism, the brutality of which is almost unspeakable. It is difficult for many of us to wrap our heads around the despair felt by African Americans during this time. The long-awaited and prayed-for jubilee had taken place. The Emancipation Proclamation was enacted. The Confederacy lost the Civil War. Slaves were free. And yet these triumphs were met with a violent racist backlash that sought to undermine these victories and terrorize Black Americans. Henry Tanner experienced racism in his own life. In his autobiography, he had this to say about the trauma and lingering PTSD that he experienced due to racism. Quote, I was extremely timid, and to be made to feel that I was not wanted, although in a place where I had every right to be, even months afterwards, caused me sometimes weeks of pain. Every time any one of these disagreeable incidents came into my mind, my heart sank, and I was anew tortured by the thought of what I had endured, almost as much as the incident itself." End quote. This racism was partially a motivation for Tanner, later moving to Paris in order to make his art, because race was not as much a factor in the Paris art community. Thus, it is into these horrific and disparaging circumstances that Tanner speaks his word of truth in the form of painting. Through his art, he communicates and testifies to the sacred worth of Black Americans and the divine love that enables them to, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, endure all things. The banjo lesson from 1883 and the thankful poor from 1884 serve as good examples. In the banjo lesson, we see a sacredness communicated through this tender moment shared between a grandfather and a grandson. In The Thankful Poor, Tanner's painting freezes time to highlight and showcase the faith that enables his people to endure so many years of hardship. Notice how Tanner holds a commitment to portraying the subjects in his paintings as real people with individual personalities and not mere racial stereotypes. However, Tanner not only painted Black American subjects, he is perhaps best known for his religious paintings. Against the harsh realities of racism and despair, and also against the harsh realities of his own battles against poverty and depression, Tanner brought the word of God in visual form. One such example is his portrayal of Daniel in the lion's den. The imagery of Daniel in the lion's den was personal to Tanner. During this time in his life when he made this painting, 
He was caught in the lion's den of racism, poverty, and a failure to make headway in the art world. As Norris Woods Jr. wrote about the painting, quote, by placing the protagonist in a dark dungeon full of wild, threatening beasts, Tanner metaphorically relates his personal struggles, continued bouts with racism, lack of sales that relegated him to a life of near destitution, ill health, and no official acknowledgement of his talent. These are related to the plight of Daniel, end quote. Henry Osawa Tanner was also fascinated with the faith of Mary, Jesus' mother. One of the paintings of Mary praying next to the infant Christ is used in our worship services at Saginaw UMC during the prayers of the people. However, Tanner's most famous painting of Mary is his depiction of the Annunciation. The unseemly and mundane room of Mary is radically transformed by the sudden appearance of an angel. Famously, this angel is not depicted with any corporeal form as in the rest of Christian tradition, but is rather a creature of pure light, a supernatural presence from outside our humanly systems of rationality whose form cannot be fully perceived nor understood breaks into the world of Mary and brings a promised hope that almost cannot be comprehended or accepted. The depiction of the angel is shocking enough, but Mary's reaction is equally startling. In much of the Christian art tradition, when the angel appears to Mary, the artist depicts her reading the Psalter or perhaps in prayer. However, Tanner's depiction of Mary shows someone in deep melancholy. When contrasted to the being of light, Mary's figure possesses a concrete heaviness of existential weight. Can this hope of the promised Messiah be accepted? And if so, what is the cost of this salvation? Personally, I believe that Mary's depiction here is influenced by Tanner's own experience during the Nadir period mentioned at the beginning of this video. The slaves experienced a great deliverance from slavery, and yet it was met with the violence of segregation and lynching. African Americans had experienced a hope that had been crushed. When I see Tanner's painting of the Annunciation, I see him wrestling with the question of whether we can hold on to hope in the midst of despair. When the painting of the Annunciation is placed in dialogue with the painting of Mary used in our worship services, I think we can see a profound testimony from the witness of Mary that yes, we can hold on to hope. Despite the chaos of the world around her, Mary chose to raise Jesus. Mary chose hope in the face of despair. And through her prayers over the infant Christ, we are reminded that salvation and deliverance is possible. So as this Black History Month comes to a close, let us be grateful for the testimony of Henry Asawa Tanner, who used his God-given gifts to remind us of how scripture testifies to the sacred worth of all people and the divine hope that is found even in despair. <laughs>